Hello and welcome to this Good Friday worship service of St Paul's Lutheran Church at Box Hill. We're online with you today. I'm Neville Otto and I'm a pastor here at St Paul's. And with others from our community, today we'll be sharing the story of Jesus' suffering and death for all people. So let's take just a moment to prepare ourselves for this worship time together. We're sharing in the words of God's scripture as we begin today. Christ personally carried our sins in his body on the tree so, so that, that we, we might die, die to sin, sin and, and live, live for righteousness. By his wounds we, we have been healed. healed. Therefore may I never boast except, except in, in the cross of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Let's pray. O oh God, all our sin, all our hatred, all our violence, all our apathy, all our selfish neglect came together in that dark hour when they snuffed out the light of your goodness, when they crucified your Son, our Lord. We, we come today to, to remember. O oh God, all your love, all your compassion, all your goodness, all your forgiveness came together in that life and that dying. Your undying and unending love when they crucified your Son, our Lord. And, and we, we remember. O oh God, all of his story, all of human history, all our story repeats itself where hate meets love, where injustice meets justice, where despair meets hope, death meets life. And we dare to believe we were there when they crucified your son, our Lord, and that this is none other than the way also to truth and life. And, and we, we remember. remember. Amen. Amen.
Today, we will walk with Jesus during the final hours before his death. Using the account written by St Matthew, the tax collector, who became one of Jesus' disciples. He wrote his gospel only a few years after Jesus' visible presence on earth. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. He asked Peter, Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. 
when he came back. He again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said, Put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? 
But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look. Now you have heard the blasphemy, what do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you?
Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him, and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them. I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him.
As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their hands and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him.
From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there, watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons.
We're there with them, those women watching from a distance. From a long distance of time, many, many years before, someone else foretold of this story, the prophet Isaiah. And in Isaiah chapter 53, if you have a Bible handy close to you there, you might like to find Isaiah 53. And I'm going to read from verse 4, a story told long before. It goes like this. It was certainly our sickness that he carried and our sufferings that he bore. But we thought him afflicted, struck down by God and tormented. He was pierced because of our rebellions and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. By his wounds we are healed. Like sheep we had all wandered away, each going its own way. But the Lord let fall on him all of our crimes. He was oppressed and tormented, but he didn't open his mouth. Like a lamb being brought to slaughter, he didn't open his mouth. That's how Isaiah wrote of the events which we're hearing today. How do they all connect? What does it all mean? Well, let me start with the cry that Jesus made from the cross that we've just heard. Matthew says it was about three o'clock in the afternoon when Jesus cried in a loud voice, Lema Eli Eli Lema Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? We feel something of these words too in our isolation, perhaps. Perhaps we know something in our lives, the pain of separation. What Jesus knew was isolation that he willingly took for you and for me, being separated from the Father that he loved and who loved him as he died slowly on a cross. You see, on that day, what we observe is Jesus taking a punishment, a sentence of death on his own body, for a price that must be paid. It's the price demanded for sin, separation from God, death. And the truth is that that's the punishment that I deserve, that you, that we all deserve. And the good news is that in our struggle, in our lament, in our sin, in what we can't do, Jesus does for us. Jesus is truly a man, but also truly God. And on his body, he takes the punishment we deserve. Isaiah points us to the Lamb of God. I've got here a cutting, and perhaps you can see that on your screens, a cutting that has some sharp barbs to it. If I take even the slightest effort to pop it into my skin, it begins to hurt. It's perhaps a small reminder and symbol of the pain that that's what Jesus suffered as he was abandoned on the cross. Pain that is represented in what he undertook as he was placed on his head, the crown of thorns and beaten into his brow. The pain of the lashes of the whip on his skin pain of nails beaten into him on that cross, physical pain, but also the pain of great separation abandoned by disciples. We find here separated from his father. The ultimate pain of separation is what Jesus takes as he's present for us and with us. As Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why are you so far from me? He willingly took the punishment for sin for us and exchanged that with the sure forgiveness from his Father. There is a sting of death of, that comes from sin. And as we stand and observe that cross on this Friday, it's uncomfortable. That's the uncomfortable truth for us. 
and yet we call this Friday good. The Lamb of God in his willing sacrifice for you and for me and for every single person takes away the sin of the world in what he does. And so I have with me, as I hold this thing, and it hurts, a small piece of lamb skin, which I wrap around the thorn. One who now takes the pain and the sting for me. I can hold on to the lamb. By this, we are rescued. Jesus for us. We may physically know the pain in these days of COVID-19 of being separated from others. In our lives, in our grief, we know the pain of separation all too often. But the good news that we see and hear this day is that nothing will separate us from God's love. Jesus stayed the course. Jesus came for us and goes to the cross for us. So my dear friends in Christ, as you hear, as you see these events on this Friday, we surely call good. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. By his wounds, we are surely healed. Amen. And so on this most sacred day, when our Lord, who has been lifted up to draw all people to himself, who has gone before us to the Father, we, his body, stand with him before the Father and intercede for his church and his world. So let us pray for the world and for all nations at this time of crisis due to the corona virus, COVID-19. O God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Protect those who work on the front line, who serve so selflessly, including doctors and nurses and all healthcare workers and essential and emergency services. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Guide those in government to serve wisely and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. On this day that we remember the death of Jesus Christ, let us pray for all who grieve. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Bring your hope and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray that we who witness the sacrifice of Christ Jesus for us and for the world may be selfless in our relationships with others. Heal any and all self centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only about ourselves. Strengthen us for service and show us how to serve and care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that by our proclaiming of Christ, by our witness to him and his loving sacrifice, that the church on earth may be strong in faith and be bold in witnessing so that all people may come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Loving Lord, Pour out your Holy Spirit on your church at this time so that we, your people, may grow in faith in Christ and unity in hope. Embolden your people that by their proclamation in word and deed that all people can come to saving faith in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all in need, and particularly those people who are on our hearts and minds right now. Heavenly Father, come to the aid of people in need. We bring to you now silently those who come to mind and heart. And finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Where Christ walks, we will follow. Where Christ stumbles, we will stop. Where Christ cries, we will listen. Where Christ suffers, we will hurt. When Christ dies, we will bow our heads in sorrow. When Christ rises again in glory, we will share his endless joy. There is no other way. He is the only way. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be the worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. <laughs> 